This is episode number 438 of the Healthy Fitness Podcast, brought to you by Inner Fight in association with our great sponsors, Smith Street Paleo. This week we have a guest on Skype from the UK, a gentleman by the name of James Moody, responsible for the company Remote Fit Pro. This is an awesome conversation and I hope a lot of you will get a lot out of it. Enjoy the show. Welcome back to another edition of the show. We are joined online on Skype, which sometimes works. Dre, you speak to your parents sometimes on Skype, mate, or no? No, oh, man, it never actually works. Never works. <laughs> but, <laughs> actually, we're lucky today. We're lucky, folks. Thanks a lot for joining us for another episode, and thanks to our guest today, James Moody, joining us from the UK. James, how is sunny England? I love the irony right there. It's actually, it's been amazing, but right now it is grey. Uh, but the good news is I'm only here for another week, then I fly to New York. So, Oof. And then back to Thailand, back to Thailand and Bali. So oh, it mate. will be sunny when I get there. How's that things in the, uh, in the desert? <laughs> mate, we, we always have hot and we always have good weather. So absolutely no complaints. Mate, I want to kick into your story. It sounds like you have the sickest life. You're going to New York, you're going to Thailand, you're going to Bali. What on earth do you do? Talk to us about your life, your job. What is it? Awesome, guys. So real, real simple. I help fitness professionals take their business online, travel the world, and live with freedom and join what I like to call the remote revolution, which is this huge sort of tidal wave, this huge movement, thanks to the digital world that's allowed people to take their business online and do all the things they want to do. But it didn't start with that, obviously. It was a bit of a bit of a journey to get there. And many, many years ago, I found myself sitting in an office in London with my head on the keyboard staring at this freaking screen all day and thinking what the hell am I doing with my life and <laughs> it's one of those one of those moments where I had like a real downer and I yeah. was like I've been at a festival I've been binging on so many drugs I've been drinking so much alcohol and I come back and I'm sitting at this screen and suddenly the screen just starts to melt in front of me I'm like what the <laughs> fuck is going on right yeah. so um, I'm like well something's got to change here so my manager walks in taps me on the shoulder and he's like James you don't look too well today. I'm like, dude, I don't feel it. And he's like, all right, I'll tell you what. I'll go get the coffees, and I'll see you in a couple of minutes. I'm like, all right, cool. Yeah. So he walks off, grabs the coffees. I come back. I'm sitting there, and I look at him, and at this point, I've literally got tears in my eyes, and he goes, you really need to get home. And I'm like, yeah, I know, man. So wow. I pick myself up, grab all my stuff, and this is, this is on Wednesday, the 16th of September, 2016. Wow, so 15. just recently. Wow. Yeah, yeah about, about three years ago. I want to say yeah. 15. Yeah. Um, and I pick up my stuff and I start walking down the uh, down the corridor. Everyone's coming into work now and they're looking at me thinking like, where the hell, what's going on with this guy? He looks like shit. So <laughs> I walk through the office, I press the button on the elevator, go down to the ground floor, cross the roads, nearly get hit by a few cars because I'm just in this like dazed state of just like come downness and horrible sort of just what the fuck am I doing? So then uh, I, I go through this whole process and then what happens is I then uh, I get in my car and I just start to like just break down. And I'm like, what the fuck am I doing here? Like, what is my life all about? Why am I doing this? Because I spent my whole life trying to prove to other people, you know, that I was good enough and all this kind of stuff. And then what, what was really strange what happened was I was like, well, if I'm going to drive home, I need to check the traffic. So I pull out my phone and then on my phone, I see this advert like we always do on Facebook. <laughs> and I'm like, it says, change, turn your business and life around in a weekend. And I'm like, oh, fucking hell, this looks a bit corny, but I'll, but I'll see what it's about. Yeah. Now, at this point, I was already aware that I wanted to become a trainer. I wanted to, to work in the fitness industry. Uh, my dad is a stroke sufferer. He had a stroke 10 years ago and his health's been on the decline since. And I was like, do you know what? I've, I've always been in good shape. I've always looked after myself probably because of what I've seen happen to my dad. And I'm like, do you know what? Yeah. I, have some, I have some value to give to the world here. So I already knew I wanted to set up this business. And I was already studying for my personal training qualification. And then I was like, ah, this thing does seem really good. I'm here in my hole right now, crying my eyes out, being this depressive bastard. Yeah. And over here, I've got an opportunity to go and create a new life and everything else. Yeah. So I was like, all right, I'm going to sign up. It's 500 quid. Boom, bought the ticket. Two weeks later, I find myself sitting in this, in this room of about 10 other fitness professionals and my mind is blown. Like, I'm like, what the hell? Like, you can do this. You can create your own life and business and, and live with freedom and all this kind of thing. Yeah. So anyway, it gets to the end of the seminar and the guy's like, dude, it's, uh, it's $8,000 for my program. Are you in? I'm like, well, I just spank every single penny I have every single weekend on just cocaine and crap. So, $8,000. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, $8,000. So I'm like, I haven't got that. I've got 500 And he's like, all right, um, I'll tell you what. If you put the 500 down now, you've got 30 days to get the extra seven and a half. And me and my stupid, like, just hyped up sense was like, yep, done. So I put the 500 down, I drive home, 
uh, broke up with my girlfriend on the way home, literally on the way home, stopped off at hers, broke up with her. And then, <laughs> Mate, you, like, should have, you should have asked her for a little bit of money before you broke up with her. What's wrong uh, with you? Uh, dude, I know, I know. Literally, it's a crazy, crazy journey. Yeah. And then I get, I, get, um, I get home to my parents' house where I'm living at the time. And uh, I go, Dad, I need $7,500. And he's like, what the fuck do you need $7,500 for? I'm like, well, you know, I want to do this personal training thing. Well, I've met this guy and this is this and this. And for some reason, he goes, here's my card. You get the money off there in the next seven days. And right. I'm like, done. So I'm taking all these huge, like, risks, some people call it. But I'm like, I've got a plan here. So I walk upstairs, uh, ring up my bank, Barclays. And I'm like, right, I need, a, I need a bigger credit card limit. Can you extend it to this, do this, this, and this? So I lie to them, basically saying I'm earning more money and I've had this raise and all this cool stuff. <laughs> and they increase, they increase my limit because this is how dumb banks oh, are, right. right? So they give me this massive limit. So I'm like, all right, cool. Next thing I need you to do is transfer the money from my dad's card, here's the number, over to this card. And they're like, yep, yeah, no problem. We'll do that right now for you, sir. Cool. Hang up the phone. Walk back downstairs. Give my dad's card back to me. Go, dad, money's off your card. It's on mine now. Oh, and by the way, I'm resigning this week. And he goes mental. He's like, what? What the hell? Because bear in mind, I'm working for a Fortune 500 company here. That who, my whole who are you life working for, James? Towards. Like, everything I've been doing has been moving towards this point. Like, really good university, Fortune 500 company, blah, blah. And I'm like, I'm leaving. So, long story short, I know this is long enough already. That's the business takes off. I leave, I leave the corporate world. The first month goes really well. We hit three grand in sales, then five grand the next month, eight grand the next month. And then it allowed me to build this business, Naked Nutrition, that eventually transformed into where i live my life today which is uh, i want to give back to other fitness professionals who were in the position that i was that's what excites me freedom is my master value and the remote revolution is the thing that drives me and that brings me to where i am today on a podcast with you guys talking about this cool stuff and uh, hopefully giving some value sweet well th- thanks for joining us mate have a nice day um <laughs> mate let's i mean that's it that's freaking great introduction and, and 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 some seriously powerful stuff there mate but let's break it down over the next few minutes the next 30 or so minutes what let's start with what job you're doing like what were you doing why weren't you motivated why were you going out and smashing yourself every weekend that's where i want to start oh for sure man well it's one of those things right you uh, i spoke at my school recently and they they were like what do you want to come and talk about and i'm like well i want to talk about making the right choice because when you're 18 years old and you're sitting down and you're looking at university choices, you haven't got a fucking clue what you want to do. Yeah. You're just doing what everyone else does because you haven't tasted anything. It's like, well, do you like vanilla ice cream? Well, I think so. Like, it's vanilla. So, oh, do you like university? Yeah, I think so. It's, it's what everyone else does. Yeah. So you end up going to university. And then when you finish university, you're like, well, I still don't know what I want to do because I haven't tried anything other than, you know, going out, playing rugby, doing all that cool stuff. Yeah. Um, so you go and get a corporate job. And I'm meant to work for a Fortune 500. So that's what you do. And uh, yeah, I was working for TGX, which is a huge company in the States. They have a branch over here in the, in the UK as well, TGX Europe. Europe. Right. And basically, I was moving, um, I was working in distribution, logistics, uh, helping the company run its run its freight, basically, moving boxes around a screen. <laughs> really? And, and that, was so, because, yeah. that was because that was what you thought you were supposed to do, or you just hadn't figured out what you wanted to do? Yeah, spot on, mate. I've never taken a second to to actually ask myself, who is James Moody? Yeah. That's the honest truth. Right. Like, my whole life was about, especially with the rugby crowd and everything else, it was all about just bravado and status and <laughs> just doing stuff, not yeah. actually stopping and thinking. And, yeah, I just ended up falling into that, that job because it was a good job, good graduate scheme, all that kind of stuff. And then it led me to the point of continuing to be with that crowd, going out every you know every couple of days, getting wrecked. Yeah. And then eventually just having a bit of a breakdown when I realized, do you know what? The last 24 years of my life or whatever it is, I've basically been living a lie. I haven't really asked who I am. Yeah. And that led me to that point when I was looking at the keyboard and the screen, it was melting. <laughs> but you're not, mate, you're not sort of on your own in this, like, a lot of people, it seems like you've kind of figured it out a little bit earlier in life, but a lot of, like, it, there doesn't seem a system in place in education or in life for us that makes us ask those questions or helps us to answer those questions, is there? No, and that's my biggest thing right now. It's when I went back to speak to, speak to my old school and I was lucky enough to speak to everyone who was in that bracket of, or in that position where they're about to apply to uni, and I just asked them the question. I was like, well, what is it you actually want to do? Yeah. Like, not what the school is telling you to do or your parents are telling you to do. Like, what is the motive? If you want to become a lawyer or a teacher or a doctor, because that's what you've always wanted to be, awesome, go and do that. 
but before you throw like fifty thousand pounds <laughs> down at something Absolutely. and three years of your life yeah. have a think go and try some things taste some things and like i even said to the guys if you want to come and spend like a week with me cool let's do that like just come and try it <laughs> for, so, like seriously like I, i'm good friends with this guy called mitch miller who's huge in the internet marketing space and he just puts his post out the other day being like hey i need someone who does blogging i don't care if you're brand new but you're going to come and live with me in my villa in thailand who's up for it and like, wow. there's opportunities like this right he just wants a cameraman someone who can come and film him every single day and he just wants someone who's cool and yeah. it's like you could go and test this stuff out try this stuff out and it's just it's just having the i guess the the courage and also the support network to say do you know what mate you're 18 years old you're 25 years old you've got another 60 years of your adult life which you haven't even started yet because you know at 18 you're not an adult because you've been force fed the last 18 years yeah. Yeah. let's go and try some things before we commit and that's what my big sort of message is to all these uh, to the younger guys especially and i guess there's some people who are the same age as me but in the in the role that they're, they're currently hating what well, how old are you right now 26 I'm 27 27 27 mate Man, it sounds like you're really giving back to the community and, and especially, you know, with the lessons you've learned. Uh, I myself are uh, 24 years old and, and, tr- and kind of jumped earlier off that bandwagon that you've been jumping off as well. And, and I think everything you've been saying is so true and it's so unfortunate to see so many people, you know, get into the education and job they don't like. And then, you know, they're 35 and they figure out they're miserable at their, at their current job. What kind of systems could we put in place in order to for these things not to happen? I mean, you've been doing speeches, you're sharing over your social media, but how can we actively make bigger decisions or bigger projects that leads to people making those thoughts when they're 18 so they don't make the wrong decisions for their future life? Well, ultimately, it's where people get in their education from right now. And it's, it is schools, like, that's what's happening. But we do know there's a huge amount of attention on social media. So I've got a, a big part to play. And anyone else who's had that journey needs to be sharing that with the younger generations. Because what are they doing when they're, when they're not in school or between lessons? They're pulling out their phone and they're scrolling through Instagram. They're scrolling through Facebook. They're doing these kind of things. And, yeah, like, in the fitness industry as a prime example... A lot of younger younger people follow fitness so-called influencers. And yeah. I think that the influencers have a huge responsibility to share their personal story, not just the the perfect shot on a beach in, you know, wherever <laughs> exactly. it might be with their ass exactly, out. Man. <laughs> let's, let's share these stories. And one of the first things my first mentor got me to do was he was like, mate, I want you to get on the camera and I want you to tell everyone about the stuff I just said on this show, yeah. like drug use like feeling like I was part of something that I shouldn't have been part of all this kind of stuff and being open and honest and raw and like as soon as I do that people attach to that story and people see you know what I'm not just a crazy person out there who you know all my friends who I don't really marry up with my friends there are other people like me so we have a responsibility to share the truth and I think that's a big thing that everyone who's got a voice which yeah. we all do in today's world thanks to social media uh, should be sharing yeah I, li- I like how you're praising social media because I think nowadays social media is getting so much kind of crap and shit from a lot of people, but the- it is actually such a powerful tool. And if you're using it right, it can really impact a lot of people. Spot on. Man, how, yeah. um, how did you from then having that shitty life where you didn't know who you were move into the next stage? You kind of went through it very quickly in-, in the introduction, but let's dig a bit more into detail. You're meeting these people. They're asking you to pay eight thousand dollars for this online course, <laughs> and all of a sudden, you're just making cash flow. Like that. Let's let's get some details here. All right, cool. So I'm going to be really honest because obviously I help other fitness professionals do a similar thing. Uh, I'm a bit of an anomaly. The reason being is because I and I'm still working this on on it today have a very, very big ego, and it's a very challenging thing. Just like someone who's shy, it's very challenging for them to get up on stage. Someone who carries a big ego, it's hard to sometimes be reflective, um, but it does have its positives as well. It does. So when I first left that corporate job, it was it, I was still in the whole fuck you m- mode. I was like, <laughs> fuck you, world. I'm going to prove to all these haters and these guys giving me shit on Facebook and Instagram, my old, my old so-called friends from rugby at university. Fuck you all. I'm going to prove I'm amazing. And I burnt all my bridges... And I had no other choice but to succeed. I literally had no other choice. I had $8,000 sitting on a credit card. I'd publicly shared this story that I was speaking about a second ago. And it was like, I'm going to fucking make this happen. So the truth of the matter is it depends on who you are as a person. If you are someone who puts yourself in the shit and then you rise up every single time, 
doing what I did is going to be great for you. But we coach people who aren't like me, and I'm like, look, if you if your main uh, value in life is certainty and you need to have that steady paycheck, then don't go fucking quitting in and throwing away your job and trying to start an online business from day one. Like It <laughs> requires a huge amount of work. And like I said, I had the tenacity to do that. I was just so, so driven. And the truth of the matter is that all came tumbling down about three to six months later um, because I burnt myself out because it was all driven by ego and significance. It wasn't driven by contribution and connection, um, which our current company, Remote Fit Pro, is. That's all built on the idea of contribution. And I give, 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 as Gary Vee says, in this company because it actually lights me up, where the previous company was more about escape than it was about achievement, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Mate, you said you've been talking about freedom and, and sort of we kicked it off there, New York, Thailand, Bali, and we've then come back to the fact that maybe it's not so glamorous. You work really hard. You burnt yourself out. Talk to us a little bit about your thoughts about sort of how hard do people need to work? Are people working too hard? Do people think they deserve things in this day and age? Like your story, as Andre said from your introduction, is like, yeah, didn't want that, did this, and now I'm killing it. Like, it's not quite like that. Give us, break it down a little bit more, mate. Give us the gore about how hard you've worked to get to where you are so far. All right. So I put a post out on social the other day about this because... So I've created this thing called the Remote Revolution, or me and our team have created this thing called the Remote Revolution, which I explained at the start of the show. Yeah. It's about this opportunity. It's just opportunity, basically, to work online and do the things you want to do. Now, a lot of people get this wrong because they see pictures of me sitting on a beach with a laptop, and they're like, oh, mate, he just sits and drinks cocktails all the time. Like, oh, this guy's a fucking fake. He doesn't actually do any work. Da, 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 da. Oh, and then there's other people who think, oh, it's really easy. I'm just going to sign up to his course. Yeah, now, exactly. First of all, anyone, who <laughs> anyone who tries to work with us, we go through this process and I make it abundantly clear what is actually needed. And if they're not willing to do that, I give them their money back. Like everything we do, we're like, 30-day guarantee, take your money back, and I'll give you your money back if you're not willing to do your work because wow. I don't want your money. Like, yeah. like it's, it's irresponsible. So I put a post out the other day on social, and I was like, here's what my, my actual life looks like. I get up at – where I am in the world doesn't really matter, but I get up at 7 o'clock every single day. I meditate every single day. I journal every single day. I read every single day. 8.30 comes around. I start to create content every single day. I spend probably about 10 hours alone each day sitting in front wow. of a computer. Then I'll train, I train every single day. And then now and again, let's say on the Sunday, I might have three or four hours off to go and do the things I want to do where you see those pictures come from. Now, right. that's my choice. Yeah. I don't have to work 12 hours a day every single day, but it's because I fucking love what I do. Like I am so driven by my mission to make the remote revolution as accessible as the internet itself. That is my mission. And that absolutely lights me up. So I can work those 12-hour days. And don't get me wrong, some days I get up and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm so tired. I want to sleep in another couple of minutes or whatever it is. Yeah. But like we hear all the time, when you start to do that kind of thing, it becomes a habit. And I don't want to start to pick up those habits. So, mate, the truth of the matter is I've gone through so much shit. I just don't talk about it because I yeah. don't attach myself to these past experiences and fucking weep about it. Yeah. Like I get shit all the time from people on social. I got so much shit when I was doing this journey. I have to constantly keep working. I'm a big believer in stoic philosophy. Like I spend so much time in my inner world working, working, working yeah. uh, on my mental state. But I just don't go and parade this stuff around. And I don't think that the real authentic people do. It's the fucking guys who are desperate to make money or to get you on their courses and program who will make up all this bullshit and uh, you know share, share all the harsher tees of reality every single day or, or glam it up every single day. That's not me. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but it's, it's not tough. it's not overly yeah it's it's very tough, mate. It's not overly glamorous. Let's let's talk about you. You said something quite interesting there that you know there's disclaimer after disclaimer. This course might not be for you. We'll give you your money back. Let's talk about what you actually offer. What what you sell, mate? Like you know, how does it really work? How do you make money? What are you giving to people? What are they getting? How does that all come together? Awesome. Good question. So there's several tiers like anything in a good business. You want to have a full ecosystem. So I'm a big believer in this, and this is one of the mistakes I made in my fitness company, and it goes for any personal trainers out there as well, is you can't just sell one service or one product to, yeah. build, a, to build a business. You've got to create a brand. You've got to create more layers to it. You've got to create a community and all these things. So ultimately, we are built on the foundation of community, and we call it the remote nation. That's all our community, our people, full of remote fit pros, and that's what is sort of the foundation. Then upon that, and all that free content. What we do is we give out different courses, different programs. We've got free offerings, depending on, upon where someone is in their journey. So right at the basis, someone who wants to take their business online, yeah. we give them a, a free five-day online startup challenge where we have 
literally wall after wall of testimonial of people who have taken their idea and turned it into paying clients in under a week. Yes, it's not perfect. Yes, it's not this big shiny website, but the idea is to get people taking action. And we do free courses like that. Wow. We then do other things for our current members um, who come through those courses. And now let's say they've established their business. They're making things look prettier. They've iterated on top of that initial product. Now they want to ramp up their lead generation. So we give them loads of strategies and tools on how to do that. We then do services like uh, running people's ads, their podcasting, their social media platforms. We help deliver that because there's a whole team of us at Remote Fit Pro. Right. Um, and then, and then we also do masterminds and retreats. So, a couple of months ago, we did one in Bristol in this massive castle. It was incredible. We had our five like top members of the remote nation. They were there, and we just basically grilled each other for five days solid. Worked out, did cool stuff, ate together, did go karting, all that fun stuff. And then um, in July, we've got one going down in Bali, and we've got some huge guest speakers coming in um, from all around the world. We've got the funnel expert from Mind Valley coming in. Mind Valley, huge company, as you might know. Yeah. We've got uh, Mitch Miller and Opposed Media talking. With all these amazing people um, are coming to come and give value at these at these events and conferences that we do. And then I guess, like you said, New York next week. I'm speaking um, at an event there. Some another guy, Ras Slaughter. He invited me to go speak on his stage. There's like 150 fit pros there. Wow. So I'll just be sharing the same stuff, man. Just keep That's keep talking cool. about what I believe. Very cool. Mate, obviously, you, you your business is, is on the back of the sort of what I'd call a growth or a continued explosion of the fitness industry, of a health-conscious consumer that we have out there. Give us some of your thoughts on the fitness industry at the moment, mate. What trends are we seeing? Maybe the health industry. Last year, we saw a lot of people sort of go down vegan after we saw what the health. Like, what's your whole take on it, mate, and, and where's it going? Oh, really, really good question. I don't know if you've asked this because you've seen my post I put up on Facebook yesterday. Is that why? No, no, not at all. <laughs> Completely random. May I try and right, stay man. away from Facebook? <laughs> oh, okay. So Facebook's, Facebook's my jam, to be honest with you. The reason is being is I can write, I've, I can write long-form content, and that's what right. I like to do. Right. Uh, but here's the thing, all right? What is happening in the fitness industry? I don't want to say like keto or if it fits your macros or vegan. I'm going to talk about a business side and even deeper society. That's what I want to talk about right now. Yeah. So the two big trends that we're seeing in the world as a whole, number one, subscription economy. Everything is becoming subscription based. We know that Netflix, Spotify, that craft beer that you can order to your house once a month and they do a selection of your favorite beers, whatever it is, everything's becoming subscription. And this is great for two reasons. Reason one, it means that you can consistently see what your expenditure is as a consumer. So I know every single month I'm not going to have that surprise bill for my car maintenance or whatever it is. I know it's all accounted for. Good. Right. We like to have certainty. Cool. Second thing why it's great, if you're a consumer as well and you're subscribing to Netflix or let's yeah, let's use Netflix. Yeah. Netflix has to keep continuing the best uh, sorry, delivering the best service in the world to you. Otherwise you're going to move to Amazon Prime or whatever whatever other options there are. So whatever subscription you're on it means that businesses are held accountable to deliver the best best value possible which is great so when it comes to fitness and i see in the industry right now and again i mentioned about brands earlier you've got to be creating something that has that monthly recurring in income that compounds month after month after month so yeah. as a trainer and i'm sure you've got some trainers listening as a trainer you've got to think about a product that solves a specific problem that people will want to renew every single month and that leads me to my second thing and this is probably the real answer to your question yeah. along with the subscription economy i see something called a communal society like i literally came up with this idea two days ago communal society <laughs> and the communal society is this idea that links back to social media being the biggest dichotomy of our age where it's connecting us but it's disconnecting us and i think this is what you guys were saying earlier was Hey, on Instagram, I can be on the beach in Thailand and I can put up a story of myself getting a freaking cocktail or whatever yeah. and share that with everyone in the world. Or I can download the latest episode of, I don't, I don't even watch Netflix. I don't know House or, I'm so, I'm so behind the times. I don't know. Uh, yeah, so, so whatever. Not, uh, I can just, <laughs> I Andre know, and I, I get know. in trouble around here because yeah. we don't really know what Game of Thrones is. Um, yeah. <laughs> and everyone in the gym is talking about it we're like what is that <laughs> oh, I've got a great story on that but I'll come to that later I'll completely kill where this is going so anyway Game of Thrones I can download the latest episode straight to my screen so I, I appear to be more connected than ever before yeah. but why is it that mental health is going up male, uh, male suicide rates are going up why have we got all these issues in the world right now because we've not got the deep meaningful connection that's what we're missing we're missing that emotional connection that we used to have and instead of these fake artificial hits of 
dopamine every time you get a like or whatever it is on Instagram or Facebook or, or whatever you use. Yeah. Now, this then leads to my sort, sort of final point. As a fitness professional and as the fitness industry as a whole, I see more and more subscriptions occurring online. I know there's a movement online, so I see more membership sites. I see. I don't just see 12-week transformations where people come and people go. They'll yeah. still be there for sure. Yeah. But for you to build a business, you have to have recurring income. And then on the back end of that, people aren't paying for that one-to-one support anymore. They want groups. They want community. They want to feel part of something bigger. And that is what I'm really getting at here with the communal society is I see the fitness industry creating more and more communities. Um, just like this is why CrossFit is so damn powerful is because they've nailed community beyond anyone else. Yeah. Like, got their own language for fuck's why, sake. Like, wh- what, why, what do you think? Let, let's just break out a second there, mate, on CrossFit because obviously we have a lot of listeners that are into CrossFit. We have a lot of big CrossFit names on the show. Why, in your opinion has crossfit been able to do that what are sort of the three or five or 25 magic <laughs> ingredients to the way that they've created community because i agree with you 100 percent. yeah it's cross when people talk about crossfit what is it like my my response is community yeah it's community uh, it's the same with let's say starbucks as well why does starbucks write your name on the cup well oh they need to identify who the coffee goes to that's fucking bullshit there's enough you know costa nero all these other massive chains who don't write names on cups and they know who it's going to so what are they doing they're creating an emotional relationship with an individual very powerful and crossfit the same thing you walk into a crossfit box straight away everyone's names go up on the board like if you've never been there before you get your intro name up on the board and you're part of that community next thing language so important and we say this all the time and you guys have heard me say remote revolution remote nation remote fit pro just on this show about 10 times yeah uh, and you've heard me say freedom travel those things as well so i have this language pattern and this is the same with crossfit they've got their own freaking language when you, <laughs> they, they, they do they do man like absolutely you hear all this man. R- rx stuff and 21:59 and all of this you're like what the hell does hspu mean like <laughs> you see all this stuff right <laughs> so and true it, it's true and it creates this language and once you create a language it adds to that layer of community as well and um, CrossFit is just, in my mind, leading the way for this. It creates something that, that makes you feel uh, you're part of something bigger than just yourself. Plus, how often in a day-to-day life do we get told we're great? You go into your cross- CrossFit box, it doesn't matter what level you're at, you get told you're great. Well done today. You've achieved this new thing. So you're constantly progressing at something. It's, yeah. uh, and it's a very, very nice thing to have, especially when the community are acknowledging that progression at the same time. Absolutely, mate. Yeah, I, I agree. Agree with all of those things. We actually, I think at one stage we had to put an article on our website that listed sort of CrossFit language and what the hell everything means. Because mate, we did a podcast on that. We did even. a whole podcast on it as well, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, absolutely right, mate. But I mean, that, that is, there's, there's a lot of that at the moment. I think, you know, you, we're so close on, on, on a lot of different things here, you know, but people want to be part of something, don't they, mate? Like that sort of, they, they don't want to go on this journey together. You, you're able to sit and work 10 hours a day on your own, but not everyone is. So people want to be part of something bigger and want to be part of a big community as well. And I think that's what, that's why a lot of, there's a lot of change in sort of group health exercises, whether it's actual the fitness or whether it's just something like a group health coach is actually on the rise massively. I don't know if you see that in, in the type of coaches that are coming through your business. It'd be interesting to hear sort of what people, what type of people come through. Are they going into the health coaching? Where, where are people sort of wanting, wanting to get to with their fitness businesses? Yeah, spot on. Well, this is the point I'm sort of making is, Back, back when I started in the online world, it was very much one-to-one. If you could sell high-ticket programs for, you know, like 1500 bucks for 12 weeks, like, cool. Like, that's, that's good stuff. Yeah. But where, where the magic really happens is in the groups. And I was actually speaking to a guy called Matt Warner on our podcast. You guys should come on our show, by the way. But I was speaking to a guy <laughs> called Matt Warner. <laughs> Consider it done, I'm sure. Done. But, <laughs> <laughs> we will. Sweet. Sweet, sweet, sweet. So, um... Yeah, so we a guy called Matt Warner, and he runs a boutique gym up in Manchester called the Gym Works. And he was saying, like, there's this huge movement of people who are coming in wanting classes. Like, they want one-to-one PT, but they want classes. Yeah. And I think, I think this is all driven from, I honestly believe social media has a huge part to play with this. It's this disconnected slash connected dichotomy we spoke about earlier um in the age that we live in and i think it's driving us to want these these old school community relationships that we used to have because 
Think about most people. They get up in the morning, they get in their car, they drive to work, they might listen to the radio, they sit at their desk most of the day, probably speak to about four or five people for a total of about 10 minutes, and then they get up from work, get back in their car, drive home, repeat. Yeah. And then why do people go out on the weekend and get absolutely fucked up like I used to? Is because you need an escape. You need a way to escape. <laughs> so fitness, as we know, for a lot of people, is that way of that alternative to getting fucked up, should we say. Yeah. 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 This is jumping a little bit out of that certain topic. I'm a personal trainer, for example, and we have a lot of personal trainers listening. How? What's your best tips for us to scale our business online? Awesome question. So there's six things that you need for scaling your business um, as an online fitness professional. The first thing, and we've got something called the remote method, R-E-M-O-T-E, and there's six steps. And it doesn't just have to be six. You could go further, but it works like this. The first thing, recognize. You've got to recognize what you want. And this is the biggest mistake that I made with my old business, Naked Nutrition, and the biggest mistake I see other fitness professionals make is they don't know what they want as a human being. Like, we just jump in and start doing stuff without thinking because everyone else is doing it. So recognize how you want your life to look. Once you know that, then you can start to build your business around it because we're in the age of personal brands and it's only going to get bigger. So you've got to know what you want your business to look like. If you don't do that, you'll create a business that you hate and you despise and it will implode. It will just crumble. So what do I want my life to look like from 6 a.m. in the morning, 9 p.m. at night, every single day, repeat, what do I want to do? Cool. Boom. Then the second thing um, is where are we? R E is examine. Examine your audience. So you need to understand who it is specifically that you work with. And we hear about niche or niche audience all the time. Very important. Um, but do you actually understand the wants, fears, needs, and desires of your audience? Like those four things. And I mean a deep emotional level. So if you think about it, your best friend or your parents or whatever know how to piss you off. They can say certain things that trigger you. Do you know that about your audience? Once you know that, you can then create that in your copy and your messaging, especially on things like social media, and your engagement will go through the roof. Like People always ask me, how do I get more engagement? Well, do you actually know your audience? They're like, yeah, they're 30 <laughs> to 50, blah, blah, blah. No, you don't know them at all. Go and spend some time yeah. with them. Yeah. So, yeah, spending time with your audience. Um, do you want me to go on? Yeah, man. Yeah, going, yeah. This, I, because it. I think what's interesting, James, here is is that even the people that aren't um, that aren't fitness pros or aren't sort of looking to get into the fitness industry, these things are actually some of these things that well, the first two as well, like is just what people should be doing for life. You know, mm. like mm. you know, recognize what you want is like you know that <laughs> that's that's in life. You know, okay, examine your audience. Maybe like is a little bit different because you're not. So, but yeah, mate. So I, I think yeah, if you want to continue, going, that's please. awesome. All right, cool. So the next one is M, which is methodology. Do you have a unique methodology or system to get a result? And we've got the remote method. I'm going through it right now. And it doesn't need to be, and I get this all the time. People are like, oh, but I work one-to-one. Like, it's not always the same. Now, I'm not saying give a one-size-fits-all plan to everyone. That's not what I'm saying. It might be your model. It might not be. What I'm saying is people like a surgeon, for example, who works in, I don't know, breast implants, there is a method to that surgery. Like, I don't know what it is because yep. I'm not a doctor. Yeah. My sister is, but I've got no idea. But there's a method they have to go through. So you want to understand your methodology. And the reason you do this is when someone is buying a product or service from you, if you can say to them, the first phase this happens, then this happens, then this happens, instead of just saying, all right, you've got to climb up Mount Everest, they can see the points along the way. And that's exciting for someone when they can see exactly what they have to do to get to the next step, the next step, the next step, and they'll keep going. It's so like methodology is great. Review. Uh, and in business as well, guys, like when you come to building a team out and you move from that solopreneur, I'm doing it all myself, to having a team like an entrepreneur, then you've got to have systems in place. And if you're hiring coaches, they need to know how you greet a client at the front door, how you take someone's payment. They need to know this stuff. So yeah, it transfers right. to that as well. Uh, then we've got offer. Offer is the next step. So what is it that you, you're actually creating? What is the product or service? And this is the biggest mistake I see with people uh, when they go online is they overcomplicate it. They look at people and go, oh my God, but Joe Wicks is an amazing website or whoever it is. And they're getting all blown away and they think, oh, I can't compete with this. You need to start really basic. My first ever program, my first ever high ticket program was sold for 997 pounds, which is like 1500 US dollars um, for 12 weeks. And it consisted of a spreadsheet with some workouts on it with YouTube links that weren't even me in the YouTube video. It then (laughs) consisted of some recipes I took from BBC website it consisted of uh, email check-in you know, daily if people wanted to, and finally a Skype call as well. And that was it, once a week. And the first guy I got on that was a guy called John. In 12 weeks, he lost 15 kilos. And I literally saw him a couple of weeks ago, and he still lost his 15 kilos. And this is like two and a half years later. So 
the point I'm making here is you don't need this big complex thing when you start out. It needs to be nice and simple, and then you can iterate on top of that once you realize what works. So create your offer, nice and nice and simple. Next thing is testing. So we're now at T in the method. So I've got my offer. I need to test it. I need to find some founding members. Now, my advice to most fit pros, if they're starting out, is they probably don't have the highest confidence in the world that their stuff's going to work. And that's normal because... You know, we haven't tested it. Why would we be confident? So what I like to do is I like to put out a no-brainer offer. So we actually get, and this is exactly what we do with our free five-day startup challenge that we help help the guys do, is we get them to put out this test launch. So they basically find three to five starting people. They put a huge discount on their program, and they also give a money-back guarantee. But they say, look, in 30 days, if you're not happy, I'm going to give you your money back. And the, the commitment from that is uh, because of I'm giving you this massive discount as a founding test member, I need to get a testimonial from you every single week or some kind of screenshot from you every single week of how your progress is going. Yep. Then yeah, what you yeah. can do is you'll get those people on. You can then use those testimonials. They're, your, they're like your gold, uh, this gold testimonials. You can start sharing that and you can build your business based on results, um, which is a great way to be doing it. Then the final thing is expand. And this is where... So many people go when they start off and they're like, okay, what Facebook ads do I need? What funnel do I need? What automations do I need? And it's like, this is the last thing you need. If you haven't done the previous five steps, your <laughs> yeah. business will collapse. So, yeah, I'm not going to go into expand. It's a huge topic nah, in itself, sure, but mate. it's yeah. basically for scaling. Yeah. Mate, that's, uh, as, as I said, uh, I think a lot of those things are, are sort of people can really not only take them into their fitness business, but in, in, in a number of levels of business and in their own personal brand, their own self and their, for their own goals as well, mate. So absolutely gold value you've, uh, you've given out there, mate. One thing that I want to dig into a little bit before we wrap up, mate, is obviously things have moved very fast for you in the last two years. The internet is moving at light speed, mate. You know, if we think about these different channels, the different platforms that we have social media wise, what we can do on that, how we can run these businesses, it's absolutely insane. But I want to get your thoughts on where things are headed. What will you be doing? Like, where do you think it'll be at in like the th- three to five year? Like, one to three years, we know things are going to go speedy. But what is really going to be next level for fitness, for fitness professionals, and for people consuming fitness by sort of 2021 and 2025 sort of timelines? What's your thoughts on that? Oh, wow. I was trying to predict the future that far ahead. Okay, so <laughs> I, can only go, I can only go off what I know and current yep. trends. So. Just, just guys out there right now, um, on all social media platforms, live video content is favored above anything else. Yeah. So it's going to be more and more of that. The reason being is it's more intimate than reading a post or a picture, like a live video, and even more so than just video on demand, yeah. because it's live. So right now on Facebook, with the current algorithms, your live video with the same headline and everything else is going to be shown six times more than a video on demand. That's right now at the time of time of this recording. Yeah. So if you guys are struggling to get engagement, you need to be on live videos. And the same with Instagram. You're going to keep seeing lives pop up at the start of the stories, yeah. like instead of all the way down the bottom. So more and more live content. People are going to be doing live workouts. They're going to be doing... I honestly see people in gyms like recording their live workouts. I think that'd be great for an in-person trainer. Yeah. It's like every single week have a time in the diary that your community that you've built online in a Facebook group or whatever knows that you're going to be doing a live stream in with all your clients so they can see that they can be part of that they, they want to get closer and closer to the action like yeah. it's all about this connection uh, the next thing I think is voice search like we already know that Google uh, on Android phones I've got an Android 60% of voice ser- uh, of searches on Android phones is done by voice yeah. 60% and that's only going to get bigger so What's going to happen is we've got Alexa, we've got Google Home, we've got you know the new Apple Home system, whatever it's called, yeah. with Siri. We do more and more voice search. So something that I'm, I'm going to be giving away my biggest secret right now, but something that Here I'm working <laughs> on is taking, taking um, our podcast guests who drop incredible one-liners, um, a little 10-second snippet, and then I'm going to be doing a 50-second like explainer on top of that. So it'll be like a 60-second thing, and I'll be releasing that every day wow. on Amazon Alexa or Google Home or whatever it is yeah. as a flash briefing, as a news briefing. So when you get in from work and you go, hey, what was the news today that I missed? There's going to be me front and, front and center of your mind, top of mind, um, on those little briefings. So voice search, live video. Um, we're probably the two big ones that I see happening. Uh, it's gonna, it's just gonna make it su- super easy for us to consume sort of what's going on. I think that's that's really the way, isn't it, mate? Like we can just, like you say, we don't really have time or we don't have the inclination to read, but we'll watch a thirty second or a, thirty second or a one minute video of someone, or or we'll listen to that. Like the Alexa flash briefing is is a really good example because it's punchy. 
it just gives you what you need and cuts out a lot of the, I guess, a lot of the stuff that you just don't need, right? And a lot of the distraction that Facebook used to be really good for news updates. And then it's just the feed is sort of inundated with stuff that you don't actually need. Mm, that's a really good point, actually. I don't know if you guys know who Ben Coomber is. Yeah, we've yeah. had him on the show. Oh, geez. Cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was actually speaking at his event on Saturday uh, after far too many gin and tonics around his house. Like, absolutely, yeah. Good fun, though. <laughs> so, so you, you still anyway, don't have a problem with alcohol, then? I <laughs> know, oh, I still have a problem. Like, I, I hardly ever drink, but for some reason, he was like, what do you want? I'm like, you've got a good gin collection here. He's got an incredible gin collection. And I was like, well, mate, we have to go those. So, um, Brilliant. Then, then he sprang it on me the next morning, being like, yeah, can you talk on stage today? I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I completely forgot where I'm going with this story. We're but, talking about the distraction of Facebook feed and the fact that Alexa is like one minute and it'll give you what you need and not what you don't want, basically. Got it. Got it. So he released on his podcast like two days ago. He talked about this saying, are you following people who are just ruining your focus right now and ruining your flow and your vibe and everything else? So get yeah. your phone out, go through those news feeds and get rid of all that crap you're following on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube that's just distracting you because you've only got so much mental capacity. Like yeah. I say, like a glass of water, I can only fit so much water in before it overflows. So if it's just full up with shit, yeah. like I can't get the good stuff. So I think from time to time, all of us need to go and detox or declutter our social media yeah. uh, and just get a clean slate and then rock from there. Absolutely. Mate, this has been absolutely awesome. We won't keep you too much longer, but we always close out with one question that you can leave your ultimate mark on the listeners. <laughs> Andre's going to hit you with it. Mate, what's, a, what's one piece of advice that you've been given or learned throughout your whole life that you would be giving to our listeners? <sighs> Straight on the spot. It's the first time we've made him quiet. Seek humiliation is the one thing that stuck with me. Awesome. Seek humiliation. Um, oh, shit, there's two now. Damn it. <laughs> what does seek humiliation mean to you, mate? Expand on it slightly. All right, so I'm someone who's very driven by ego, like I said, and yeah. I'm constantly working on this all the time, and by entitlement as well because of my age, and I feel like everything should be you know, here right now. Yeah. And because of that, sometimes um, I don't want to hurt my persona or how I'm looked or how people perceive me, right? So I won't do the uncomfortable actions, like the really uncomfortable actions. But if I'm willing to seek humiliation and be publicly humiliated, that's where the growth happens. Just like in the gym, you know, when we get yourselves into that dark, dark space, that's where the growth happens. So seek humiliation on a daily basis. And I think you're going to grow as a human being and as a business owner. Mate, amazing. If people want to connect with you, website is, hit us. It's www.remotefitpro, short for fitnessprofessional.com. And if you guys want to jump on board our free challenge, which is five days, it's pretty intense, complete free, um, it's remotefitpro.com forward slash 5DC. There we go, folks. Check that out. And also check the guys out. Check James and his team out over on Instagram, Remote Fit Pro. And as he said there, he's pretty active on Facebook. So make sure you check him out there as well. James, we really appreciate your insights, mate. You have a great story. You tell it with a lot, a lot of passion, mate. <laughs> and I know that the main crux of your business is with fitness professionals, but I think everyone that's listened to today's show, no matter if they're a fitness professional or not, would have got a load of value from what you're saying. And I just encourage everyone that has listened to see those the principles that you're using to build your business, to do to achieve your vision is something that people can actually use in their lives no matter what path they're on, no matter what business they're in. I think your principles are absolutely solid, mate. So thank you so much for everything that you've shared. We really, really do appreciate you. Thanks, man. Oh, cheers, guys. Mate, absolute legend, mate. Thank you very much. And, mate, when you're in Dubai, you'll have to come and see us. Maybe come and have a chat to some of the members here at Inner Fight. We'll put on a talks for you, and we look forward to seeing your business grow. Cheers, guys, and I do look forward to coming out to Dubai despite the freaking scorching hot heat. I'll be there. <laughs> Thanks a lot, James. Cheers. See ya.